Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O God, the protector of all that trust in thee, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Increase and multiply upon us thy mercy, that thou, being our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we finally lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of 1 Kings. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart towards you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love and have given him a son to sit on his throne today. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David. Although I am only a little child, I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a great people so numerous they cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil. For who can govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to him, Because you have asked this and have not asked for yourself long life or riches or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right. I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you, and no one like you shall arise after you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading from Psalm 119. 
Your decrees are wonderful. Therefore, I obey them with all my heart. When your word goes forth, it gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. I open my mouth and pant. I long for your commandments. Turn to me in mercy, as you always do to those who love your name. Steady my footsteps in your word. Let no iniquity have dominion over me. Rescue me from those who oppress me, and I will keep your commandments. Let your countenance shine upon your servant, and teach me your statutes. My eyes shed streams of tears, because people do not keep your law. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. your countenance shine upon your servant and teach me your statutes. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory Glory be to thee, O Lord. Another parable Jesus put before the crowds. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. 
Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And Jesus said to the disciples, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. To start this homily with a bit of honesty, I groaned when I read this passage and set out to write this. There's so much in this passage that I have personally wrestled with throughout my faith journey so far. Here we have St. Paul speaking of predestination. We have the saying, if God is for us, who is against us? That gets plucked out of context and shoved into triumphant modern worship songs. We have the notion of the elect. Honestly, as a former evangelical, this is one of the sections of the Bible that makes me turn to God in prayer, asking why, begging for God to grant me peace and grace, begging God to show me how to be a better sister in Christ to those with whom I disagree. And then, at the end of this passage, there is one of my favorite bits of scripture, asserting that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord, and that fills me with hope when I despair. Basically, this passage is a roller coaster for me. And honestly, I could preach an entire sermon series on just these 16 verses. But our lectionary dictates that I preach it all at once, as one unit. And so, to not get too far into the weeds on any one bit, I will start with the section that gives me the lens through which I read the whole. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? And then St. Paul doubles down. I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the part that makes my breath catch in my chest. Because if I'm being honest, some days I don't really believe this. I have a tendency to live cynically, to live in judgment of myself and others, to live in fear, to cling to my idols of pride and false certainty and smugness. I don't wake up every morning 
believing that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ. The days in which I really wrap my heart around this are different. The days in which I believe this, I think of the folks who are normally hard for me to love, and I think about them with grace and mercy. The days in which I believe this, I stop thinking about all the changes I need to make to be worthy, and I remember that I am loved already. The days in which I believe this, I stop ascribing my prejudices to God, and I remember that God will not, cannot be kept from God's people. When I read this text through this lens, it's less difficult for me to read the phrase, God's elect. If God loves us, if Christ came here and died and was raised and sits at the right hand of the Father, who are we to say who God's elect are? Who are we to say that God's elect isn't a huge tent? Who are we to say that God's elect doesn't maybe include even the people we would rather not imagine God extending grace to? When I read through this lens, when I read those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, I wonder if maybe God foreknew us all. If maybe God predestined and calls and justifies and glorifies us all. As you know, I'm talking of things that have been hotly debated by good, loving, God-fearing people for hundreds of years. I don't know who is right and wrong. I don't know if God already knows who's ultimately in and who's ultimately out, or if in the end we're all in. This passage makes me uncomfortable because I have been told before that I risk losing my salvation by wondering these sorts of things. These passion makes me uncomfortable because despite being told that I risk losing my salvation for being too honest, I love the church, and it is painful for me to see us divided. This passage makes me uncomfortable because sometimes when I meet strangers and they tell me they're Christians, I wonder if they knew how much I doubt if they would think I'm not really a Christian. I don't have big answers. I can't tell you what you should believe about what St. Paul means when he refers to the elect. All I have to say is this. The days in which I am struck powerfully with the belief that nothing can separate us from the love of God and Christ, that not even my own broken heart can keep God from me, those are the days I walk with more purpose, with more love and care for those around me, with more hope. I know that living life as a community who believes this together, who hopes together, is much better than living without hope apart. Believing that God loves us, that God wants to be with us, inspires us to not get lost in cynicism and despair, to love one another fully, to extend grace to one another, and to work for justice and mercy together. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God and Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And now let us affirm the faith of the church in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. 
he ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the holy church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love and be found without fault at the day of your coming. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Mary Ann and Chilton, our own bishops, for all bishops and other ministers, and for all holy people of God. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease and that all may be one as you and the Father are one. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray to you, Lord God. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples. For those in positions of public trust, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and the freedom of every person, of every color. For a blessing upon all human labor, and for the right to use the riches of creation that the world may be freed from poverty, famine, and disaster. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees and prisoners, and all who are in danger, that all may be relieved and protected we pray to you, Lord God. Lord, have mercy. For all who have committed themselves to our prayers, for all families, friends, and neighbors, for all on our parish prayer list, for all those suffering from COVID-19 and those caring for them, that being freed from anxiety, they may live in joy, peace, and health. And for all who have died in the communion of your church and those whose faith is known to you alone that with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, they may have rest in that place where there's no pain or grief, but life eternal. We pray to you, Lord God. Lord, have mercy. Direct us, O Lord, in all our doings with thy most gracious favor and further us with our continual help that in all our works begun, continued, and ended in thee we may glorify thy holy name and finally by thy mercy obtain everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in thy will 
and walk in thy ways, to the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sin. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit.
The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto Thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God, Creator of the light and source of life, who hast made us in thine image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name evermore praising thee and saying. All glory be to thee, O Lord our God, for that thou didst create heaven and earth, and didst make us in thine own image, and of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him, and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a full and perfect sacrifice for the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for the many, for the remission of sin. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, for the remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we, thy people, do celebrate and make with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again with power and great glory. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and with thy word and Holy Spirit to bless and sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be unto us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness 
to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies. Grant, we beseech thee, that all who partake of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and also that we and all thy whole church may be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep our pray. Lord God, whose Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, triumphed over the powers of death and prepared for us our place in the new Jerusalem, grant that we, who have this day given thanks for his resurrection, may praise thee in that city of which he is the light, and where he liveth and reigneth forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of God, which passeth all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to
Thank you.